Hello and welcome. We're going to tie up uh, one of the Tug Dealer's Crawling Stones. Uh, we're going to do a Golden Stone variant on it this time. I'm tying on a 6 aught Caddis Curve. This is actually a pretty thick hook here. Um, I like a nice heavy hook for this fly. I uh, like it to get down, ride nice and deep. One thing people don't, or some people don't know about a, uh, a Stonefly Nymph is that it doesn't actually have the ability to swim. It's 100% at the mercy of the current. So this fly is tied with that in mind, and it's designed to ride hook up, uh, legs down, as if it's trying to grab the next rock or piece of structure that it can to anchor itself back to the bottom of the, uh, the river or the stream. So to begin, we're going to tie our thread in. I'm using a 6 aught Nano Silk from Semperfly. It's unquestionably the strongest tying thread you can get your hands on. Um, never tied with anything even remotely close to as strong as this. The 6 aught is strong enough that uh, this hook I've got here wouldn't stand a chance. If I decided I was going to straighten out this hook, it would be straight. Or if I was going to decide I was going to bend it sideways, it'd be sideways. Incredibly, incredibly strong material. So, you notice I've got a bead on here already, but I've pushed it back to the back of the fly. We're now going to tie in a pair of goose bites. Um, again, Keeping in mind that we're doing a golden, so I'm going to use a lighter, almost uh, a light olive colored by it. I want those to split. Don't want it to drop down though. I'm going to tie this right down and create my thread base the end of that by it. I'm going to put a half hitch in there. I'll put two of them in just to secure that in place because I'm going to cut off my thread now and push my bead up over top of those bites. Tying our thread back in here at the back where we left off. Get rid of the little tag. Now I'm going to grab some 0 0.025 lead free uh, round wire so basically just some weight um, I don't need a lot of this maybe an inch I'm going to take that wire and I'm going to bend it in half match up my ends pull it together so that I've got that little kind of loop to the wire take that wire I'm going to push my bead up and I'm going to stick that wire right inside the gap of the bead there on the top of the hook. So again, I mentioned I want this red hook to ride upside down or inverted with the hook up. I'm going to tie it down to the bead and come back all the way down and right over top of the lead. I don't want to go too far with the lead because I really want this part of the hook to reach the bottom. So I'm just going to pull this GSP Nano Silk tight here and you'll see it just peeled that uh, lead off for me without any difficulty whatsoever. Take this down to the bend of the hook, just about to where my vise stops, or where the hook stops in my vise. I'm going to grab a little bit of red dubbing. This is actually Semperfly's uh, fine dubbing, and it's in red. And I'm going to create myself a nice little rope here. And what I'm going to do with this is actually make a little ball of dubbing right here at the base of the hook. This is like my hot spot on the fly. So I've spent the last, well I guess not last year, last year I fished it like crazy. But I spent about two years, a little over two years, developing this pattern uh, to mimic a stone nymph as accurately as I could. Now I'm going to tie in uh, a couple more bites at the back here. And again, I want them to split on either side of that little ball of dubbing. Um, some guys don't like to use bites. Uh, they say that the, 
the hard and pointiness of them actually uh, can deter fish. I've never had that or never noticed that as an issue, I should say, on this particular pattern. Um, not to say that it hasn't happened, but it wasn't ever uh, an issue that I noticed enough to use a different material. That and I really like the way it presents and bites are a little bit tougher. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a little bit of our uh, soft wire, medium copper. Nothing too fancy. You can get this at any tying shop. And I'm going to tie this in on the top of the uh, on the top of the hook. I don't need to tie quite that much in. Um, again, if you're using the nano silk, be aware of the amount of tension you put on it. It'll take pretty much everything you can give it um, without breaking. But the materials you're tying on, in a lot of cases, can't. I've sheared uh, my copper wire a few times while doing this. So now I'm going to take one of uh, silver tip flies, stone nymph backs, a fantastic product that was developed by a friend of mine named Brent. He's done an excellent job. He actually took photographs of uh, stone nymphs for this particular product. He does some other ones, but for this one he took photographs of some stone nymphs and then uh, basically took the image apart, put it back together in a printable format. So the reason we've done this, and actually I'm going to turn the hook sideways so you can see this. Um, I'm going to lay this so that the head goes past the back of the fly, and I'm going to set it in, tilt this just a little more so you can see that here. I'm going to set it in on the side of the shank, and then I'm going to use the thread to pull it around and underneath the hook, because I want it, again, this fly is going to ride upside down, so I want that back to be what would be the underside of the hook, but in this case it's going to be the top of the fly. So now it's secured in, her uh, wires in, bites and a little bit of uh, hot spotter in. I grab a, a dubbing mix here, I make this uh, by combining a couple different ones. There's a, an olive colored ice dub in there, and or sorry, a, a caddis green ice dub in there, and uh, an olive holographic dub or hollow dub in there and we're just going to build ourselves a nice tight little rope and thread. A little moisture in our fingers helps with that sometimes. Some guys use wax. Um, sometimes I use wax, just not in this case. So I'm going to flip this back to right side up here, or upside down as it were. Pull this back out of the way. I'm going to do my first wrap right up tight onto the back there. Oh. Watch that, sometimes that hook point will grab your dubbing and mess with your rope. I'm just going to add just a little bit more because I know that for this pattern I for this size of nymph back that I've got on there, I want to have just a little bit more dubbing in play. Lock that down. I'm going to pull my back forward. Again, it's already on the top of the hook because of the way we tied it in, or the underside of the hook as it were. Top of the fly. I'm going to cinch that down right there put two wraps in to secure it. Now I'm going to grab my wire and I'm actually going to reverse wrap my wire right along the segmenting on the nymph's body uh, according to the pattern on the back. Use that pattern to a maximum effectiveness. One in front, one behind, one in front, one behind. Tell the scissor makers I just did this. It's really not good for your scissors, but I misplaced my small snips. I'm going to take just a pinch of dubbing. That's too much. I want half of that. And I'm going to over top of my thread wrap there. 
I'm going to pull the back out of the way and I'm going to invert the fly back to its proper direction and grab myself a pair or a single piece really of uh, round rubber leg fold this in half so I've got about an inch or so inch and a half for each side now we put these on we just bend it over top of our tying thread again this is another one of those situations where you want to be very aware of how hard you're securing things down because this nano silk will slice right through that rubber if you pull it too tight and you won't yeah it's not like tying with a uni or a different thread where the thread will snap first this stuff will not so you can see I'm tying these legs on just well, on the hook just above the uh, the midway point of the hook and that's because when this flies upside down I want these legs to hang down below cinch that down <coughs> take a little bit of a little pinch of dubbing here pull the legs back and now I'm going to flip the fly back up the way I want it to ride. So with these backs, you notice there's four shucks. It's actually three shucks in the head, but we use that head as, a, as the second half of the final shuck. And you'll notice that there's the four sections. So we're going to go right in between sections one and two. Uh, and you'll notice that in between two and three, there's a little spot where the shucks have a gap in between them. That's a tie point. Brent did a real nice job of putting that together, letting you know exactly where to tie that in to, uh, to give you your, your segmentation. So just a couple wraps needed there. Again, the nano silk, I get to pull those pretty tight. A couple turns of the dubbing, make sure our legs are where we want them. Grab our bodkin again, we're going to push the whole remaining two sections straight back over top of that little bit of dubbing we put in. And now we're just going to fold that front half forward. Reach underneath and pinch that, oh. Pinch that into place. There we go. And I'm just going to come in front of our legs. I'm going to drop the whole thing here, so I'm going to pull the legs back, get them out of the way, lay that forward again, and I'm going to catch it. <laughs> I'm going to try to catch it. There we go. I'm going to pull that down. Again, making sure my legs are out of the way. I don't want to mess them up. Just straightening out the uh, shuck there. I tightened it down, it rolled a little bit. So I'm going to lock that into place. Take and I'm going to fold that little tying tab straight back. Some guys will cut it off. Um, I find it's not necessary because of the way we finished this fly. Huh. It's curled itself on the bead there, so got it out of the way there. And finally, we're going to take one more little pinch of dubbing. Make ourselves a nice fine rope. We only need enough to do two or three turns here. We're just going to use this to take our front legs and push them back a little bit and to give us a nice finish to the fly and a place to bury our thread for our whip finish. So now we're going to do one, two, three turn whip. And we're going to pull straight up, pinch it, pull down. I'm going to hold my hook here because if I don't, I'm going to pull it right out of the vise. I'm going to cinch that right down underneath the uh, the bead and bury that. It makes this a very, very durable fly. Um, I've actually caught 40 plus fish, 50 fish on a single fly and, uh, and still had it looking good. The only thing that eventually gets chewed off and there's no way around it is the bites. But even without the bites, fly still fishes quite well. I just take my scissors, pull my legs down out of the way, and trim some of that uh, scraggle 
kind of out of the way. Again, not necessary. Um, a lot of guys will say I'm too picky with the uh, base of that fly, but uh, the more confident you are on the fly, the uh, the better you'll fish it. And here is some of the straggle on top too. And with that, uh, you can take and put a little bit of head cement just right at the base of the bead if you'd like. Um, when I do do that, I use uh, Fish Pimp's Hard Headed. It's this stuff right here. It's got kind of a milky color to it. Um, it doesn't build up a ton, and when it dries, it's crystal clear. It also penetrates the material fantastically. Um, I attribute that to the fact that it's a water-based uh, head cement, and yeah, just really enjoy using it. I use uh, Fish Pimps Hard Headed and their uh, their Headstrong products on just about every fly I tie. Um, nice thing with the Hard Head is you can actually use it on a little dry fly too. It doesn't add a ton of weight to the front of the fly. So with that, that's Tug Dealer's Crawling Stone. Uh, final step would be to pull my legs back and make sure that none of them come past the uh, the bend of the hook here. So I'm going to do that one side at a time. And the reason for that is there's nothing more frustrating than your legs constantly getting caught up inside the hook when you want them to be outside doing all the moving. Again, this is just me being picky. So there you have it, folks. Tug Dealer's Crawling Stone. Cool thing about this fly I mentioned is that it rides hook up. Even just dropping out of the vise, it'll land just like that. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Tight lines.